The Department of Justice continues to prosecute more participants in the criminal conspiracy to stop the peaceful transfer of power on January the 6th. And as The Guardian reports, the investigation is starting to focus on the coordination between uh, far-right military gangs and their actions leading up and during the insurrection. In fact, a new court filing reveals text messages showing that the head of the Florida Oath Keepers chapter, Kelly Meggs, called the jailed leader the Proud Boys, and it shows them coordinating protection services for Donald Trump ally Roger Stone. But we are also seeing for the first time that the Oath Keepers mentioning, as the January 6th riots were underway, a newly elected Trump-loving member of Congress in their text. None other than Dr. Ronnie Jackson. Quote, Dr. Ronnie Jackson on the move needs protection. If anyone inside, cover him. He has critical data to protect. Uh, Hugo Lowell is a congressional reporter for The Guardian who has been covering the investigation into January 6th. He joins me now. Hugo, it's great to see you again. You reached out to Dr. Jackson about this story and others. How did he respond to the text in this filing? Yeah, so we got a statement uh, through his office earlier this morning that he was not involved with any of the aforementioned groups, so the Oath Keepers and the, and the Proud Boys, uh, and that he had never spoken to any of these people, which I thought was interesting because... Uh, obviously, these were text messages, and it seemed to be that there was some sort of connection between the Oath Keepers and Ronnie Jackson. And during the Capitol attack, maybe that was through text. So I put that question back to his office and did not receive a response. So is there any plan um, by the January 6th committee to call Republican members into Congress like Ronnie Jackson? Is there anything that, you know, under oath he may be compelled to offer up? Well, it's a good question, and I think the select committee is still trying to decide what they want to do with the Republican members of Congress and whether they want to bring them in uh, before the committee. You know, back in January, I was hearing uh, murmurs among the members on the committee and among the staff that they were really concerned about the political implications of bringing in members of Congress, right? Members of Congress protected by the so-called speech and debate clause. It's really hard to overcome that and to subpoena these members without it turning into a real partisan fight. And, you know, the committee has looked at this and thought, well, if it's going to be a partisan fight anyway, Way, maybe we bring them in. But I don't think they want to take that step just quite yet. I think they, if they do that, they do it towards the end of their evidence gathering phase, which is like looking towards the end of this month, I think. There was an interesting nugget in one of the texts um, from the Oath Keepers founder, Stuart Rhodes. And he, it seems to add someone he identified as, quote, an event producer for Stop the Steal. But uh, that name, as you see there on the uh, screen, was actually redacted. What do we know about that, and why might that name actually be redacted at this point? It's Again, it's, we, we just don't know. It's a good question, right? I mean, this is the first time we're seeing the leaders of the Proud Boys, or the, kind of the leadership of the Oath Keepers, rather, um, talking about a stop-the-steal individual. And, you know, it's none other than Stuart Rhodes himself adding a Stop the Steal event producer, which we might read as almost like a rally organizer or someone connected to the events surrounding uh, the January 6 rallies to this group chat. And the second line of the, the text message you referenced is really telling because it goes, well, you know, he's going to help us determine who's going to do what um, in the, quote, creative chaos on January 5 and January 6. I mean, it's really remarkable and damning and, you know, raises all sorts of questions about who this person might be. Now, it's possible, right, that Stuart Rhodes misidentified this person and maybe it was a Save America rally person because they were kind of all colloquially being known as Stop the Steal. But it's a really interesting point and the point that he raises afterwards in the text about the creative chaos, I think, is, is most interesting. Thank you.